Uh, I want to jump in quickly here tonight. Uh, Exodus, I want you to go to chapter 20. Where we left off last week, uh, the children of Israel have left Egypt. I'm not going to uh, rehash much because of time, uh, but they've left Egypt. Moses is leading them out. And uh, remember, they're, they're tested last week by the Amalekites. They get attacked for the first time, and they have to raise the sword, and Joshua is the commander. And uh, where we left off last week, we were talking about uh, Aaron and her standing beside Moses because when Moses lifted up the rod of God, the staff that was in his hand, the staff that he stretched out over the Red Sea and God parted the water, when he lifted up that staff up on top of that mountain overlooking the battle, the children of Israel won. When, he, when his hand went down, they lost. So they figured out real quick, because he got tired of holding his hands up, Aaron and her got on either side of him and helped hold him up. And I told you that story, and I also told you about Jethro, uh, Moses' dad, uh, advising him that the weight of leading Israel was too big for him and to put people around him to judge the smaller matters and then let the bigger matters go to him. So he pointed people over thousands, over fifties, over hundreds, and he kind of had a, a, a breakdown. He had a, 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 a tier uh, system, a kind of a chain of command, if you will. And um, so it, it really helped him. And I, I ended with the thought that, uh, the, that leaders need people around them. And I, I kind of got personal uh, with you, uh, just from the, the standpoint of being a pastor, okay? If you've never been a pastor, there's no way to describe what being a pastor is, is like. Uh, and there is needed in a pastor's life good people uh, to help hold his hands up. Because uh, there is nothing like having people that support the the mission that you're going and they prayerfully stand with you and they help hold your hands up and they help take the load off of you the load of of leading any type of organization for the lord is a huge weight one you know most most people I, people all the time say well you preach on sunday morning and wednesday night that's pretty easy yeah okay uh, that part is that's the fun part uh the the hard part is 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 everything else and uh that that's something that if you're never a pastor you will never probably understand uh fully uh but there is a weight not to mention the weight that if you just the preaching and the teaching uh you want to uh i don't ever want to be dry stiff and boring i don't ever want to not have the power of god i have preached sermons in my life where i know i did not have the power of god on me and I did not have had the presence of God, but I was I did not have the power of God. And I tell God often, I don't want to be a powerless preacher. I don't want to preach with no power. I don't want to preach and nothing happen. Nobody be stirred. Nobody be saved if they're lost. I want to preach in the power of God like Peter preached on Pentecost. That's what I want. OK, and, and if you go through uh, just preparing messages and and and. People ask me sometimes, they'll, they'll say, well, when do you prepare your messages? My life is a constant preparation for messages, okay? Uh, that is, that's a, uh, a trigger that's switched in you, and you're constantly looking at truths, at stories in the Bible, and say, man, that would apply so well to, to different situations. You could help somebody with this. You're constantly putting things together. And I always compare preaching uh, my, uh, the way I preach to kind of like a, uh, a crock pot. You put it in there and you let it start cooking. And, and when it's done, it's done. But it's going to take a while. So I put a bunch of ideas and a bunch of thoughts in, in the big crock pot. And when it's ready, we'll pull it out and eat on it on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. But, but uh, it is invaluable. And I just want to say this personally. It's invaluable to have good people around you and and i feel very loved as a pastor very prayed for as a pastor and that is something that not every pastor has lots lots of pastors have nothing but trouble and uh, uh problems from the people in the church and they're trying to be more of a stumbling block to the pastor than a than a support to him and i appreciate a church that supports his pastor and i want you to know that uh, from the bottom of my heart i want to jump into exodus chapter 20 exodus chapter 20 you may not recognize it by the reference, but Exodus chapter 20 is probably uh, one of the most well-known chapters in all the Bible. It is where the Ten Commandments are given. We've all heard of the Ten Commandments, right? Okay, the Ten Commandments. And tonight, I want to look uh, 
uh, at you. I don't want to teach you. I want to kind of use this as a diving board and jump off in here tonight. We're trying to cover the highlights. Hope you're learning something about the Old Testament uh, or refreshing and knocking some dust off of some things that maybe you've heard in the past. Uh, but I want you to have a good understanding. Exodus chapter number 20. They have left Egypt. They are out in the wilderness. Pharaoh's dead. He got killed trying to chase them across the Red Sea and the waves crashed back together after God parted them for the Israelites to cross. And then I want you to see what happens. Exodus chapter number 20. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Then comes the verses that we know. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And he goes on and he's going to start listing out the Ten Commandments. But before we get into the Ten Commandments, I want to show you that verse number one and two again. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God. Look at this. I am. There's that I am, right? Again. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage or the house of slavery. He said, I am the God that brought you out of slavery. I am the God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord thy God. I, it's very important to point this out because if you don't understand this, you won't understand the rest of chapter 20. And if you don't understand Exodus chapter 20 and how it relates to the New Testament, you won't understand the rest of the Bible. Okay? I want you to understand something. God had already done the saving at this point. Remember what we talked about. Egypt is a picture of being lost in the world. Lost in slavery to sin. When God sends the lamb to die for your sins and the Passover happens, you are out of slavery headed to where God wants to take you, right? It is a picture of getting saved, okay? Once you and I were in sin, if you've been born again here tonight, you've asked Jesus to be your Savior, and you meant it from the bottom of your heart, believing in Him as your Savior, putting all your faith in Him, you are not a slave anymore. You may choose to make yourself one, but you don't have to be one because you have been bought out of slavery. The Lord is your God. So at this point in the children of Israel leaving Egypt in being in the wilderness, headed to the promised land, the purchase has already happened. He says here, I am, present tense, I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You say, Brandon, why is that important? Because most people think of the Ten Commandments as something you do to get the relationship with God. Many people in my life I've talked to and I've said, well, what do you think a person has to do to go to heaven? What do you think a person has to do to be saved? Well, I think you need to be a good person. I think you need to be honest. I think you don't need to be a cheat. I think you need to, to, to clean up your act and, and go to church and do all these things. You know what all those things are? Commandments, right? Commandments. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not uh, covet. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Don't steal. Those are commandments. Here's what I want you to understand. God already has a relationship with them in verse number two and the commandments don't start to verse number three god is giving his people commandments okay very important god does not give commandments without their first being a relationship okay god is giving his people commandments because they are his people Okay? Think about it this way. How many have a dog? Okay? I'm not even going to mention cats. Okay? Marianne, I'm sorry. Uh, how many have dogs? Lot, lots of you? All right. How many have a fence for your dogs? You got a fence you put in there. Okay? Let me, let me ask you. Okay, you got a fence. I don't. Mine just run loose, right? Uh, you can create all kinds of, break into people's houses and all kinds of stuff. Um, but um, I know mine are, mine are up at night, but they're loose during the day. Well, but if you put your dog in a fence, okay, you do that to keep that dog either away from something it's not supposed to or for its protection, right? But you don't go to your neighbor and take their dog and put it in your fence, do you? That wouldn't make sense, right? You have rules for your kids. You know why? Because they're your kids. 
If, and, and if I were to compare my rules to your rules, our rules would differ. You know why? Because they're my rules for my kids. Okay? You have rules for your kids. You, you put a fence around uh, your dog, not my dog, right? Okay? God gives commandments here to his people. The saving has already been done. After the saving, he says, thou shalt not. Why? Why does God give the commandments after the relationship's already been established? Because, listen to this, God knows what's best for his children. And if you will look at commandments that way, it, it, changes, your, your eye, it changes the way you look at the world. Okay, God's rules or his commands that he gives you aren't there to ruin your life and keep you from having fun. Okay, that's how we think of it. Oh man, I can't, we, man, Christians can't do nothing. He can't do, have no fun. He can't do this and he can't do that and he can't do that. You know why God says don't do that? Because he knows how it turns out. He knows what's going to lead you to, what did we talk about Sunday? The fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, long suffering. He knows what you really need in your life. And if you are around these things, you are not going to enjoy those things. You're not going to have peace in your life. You're not going to have joy. You're not going to have love in your marriage, in your relationships. He says, don't do these things. Not because I hate you, because I'm God and I said so. That's not the spirit of it. He said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt not. It's rules for his kids. Okay, very important to understand. Look at verse number three. Let's look at the commandments. Thou shalt have no other gods before thee, before me. The first commandment is no other gods. Let's write this down. Let's write the 10 down real quick. No other gods, right? No other gods. Okay, here's number one. Okay, we'll go through number two and it looks like I'm going to run out of room. Okay, so look at, look at verse number four. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Okay? No graven image. That means like a statue. Uh, God doesn't want you to... Uh, uh, he, he, okay, they come out of Egypt. They made statues of things that they were worshiping. Okay? All throughout the Old, Old Testament, you see God get really upset because people were bowing down to statues and they're bowing down to Molech and Baal and all these, these false gods. Okay, God says, don't you do that. He said that you're not going to make a graven image of anything, okay, and put it, you, you, don't even make a graven image of me, because you don't know what I look like, okay, uh, you, you don't know anything, don't make any graven image, okay, now, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord, thy God, am a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children under the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay? He said, I am God and I am jealous and you're not going to make an image to a cow. You're not going to make an image to the sun. You're not going to make an image to some stupid God. I am the Lord thy God and I'm your God and I'm jealous of you. Okay? And you're not going to bow down to that. Don't do it. Okay? So, no other gods before me. No graven images of gods. Okay, look at verse number six and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, verse seven, third commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Okay, so name, <clears throat> I'm just going to write some keyword, no name in vain, right? Okay, can't take the Lord's God, Lord God's name in vain. Okay? Now, often we think of that as, uh, you know, saying uh, a certain cuss word or, or took the Lord's name in vain. Certainly, let me say this to you, um, that I can't stand. I, I, this was drilled in my head from the time I was ki a kid. And I want to I caution everybody because I hear this among our young people. I hear this among people that I go to church with. Uh, don't s use the Lord's name flippantly, Okay. I don't even like it when you say, God. Okay? Oh, my God. Okay? Most people say that. I don't even like OMG. Okay? That's how like, old-fashioned I am. Okay? Um, okay? Now, I, God. What is it? That is. Now, I want to say something. Because when you use God's name in vain, 
we often think about saying, okay, like using like GD and saying, you know, God damn you, you know, to do, you know, to hell or wherever. People say that, and that's, that's taking the Lord's name in vain. It is. But I want to get to the underlying issue because what we think is taking the Lord's name in vain, yes, it is, okay, and it's bad and you shouldn't do it, but what God is really driving at here, I want to get to in just a second. Another thing that, that you should never do, and you just got to be real careful, you don't want to, to say GD to somebody. You don't want to say, uh, I don't even like to use the word God just flippantly, okay? A pet peeve, and, and man, I can't stand this, and I've, I've, I've had friends that have done this, and I've, I've called them out on it. I can't stand it. Jesus Christ, okay? Don't say that flippantly, okay? Don't say that flippantly. You know, people get mad, and the first thing they want to say, Jesus, and you use him as a swear word, okay? He is your Savior, okay? Don't do that. But, let me say this. I don't think that's what God had in mind with the third commandment, okay? Here's what he did not want. He does not want you taking his name in vain or in an empty way. Or, in other words, taking his name and attaching it to something he has nothing to do with. Okay? Don't take God's name and put it over here in vain. He doesn't have anything to do with it. That's why when you say GD to somebody, you are saying God's going to send you to hell or damn you. Okay? Right? Well, God didn't say that. You did. Okay, so you're taking God's name and you're mad at somebody. So you're going to pronounce a curse on them and attach God's name to it. Right. That's taking God's name in vain. Here's what here's you want to really know what God taking God's name in vain is. If you really want to get down to it, it's when you say, well, I think I can do that. I, I you know what? I think I can do that when the Bible clearly says, no, you can't. And you say, well, I think God wants me happy. So I think I'll do it. I think God ultimately will understand and he's okay with this one. No, he's not. Quit taking God's name and attaching it to something that he has nothing to do with. Taking God's name in vain. It's the third command. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Now watch this. Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it. Shalt thou in it, thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant, thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So God gives like three big verses here to the Sabbath day, right? Which is the fourth commandment. Okay? The Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is basically that God wants one day a week. He wants you to work for six days a week and try to make it on your own. But pause the seventh day, no matter how successful or no, no matter how big of a failure you've been. And acknowledge that God is the one that gave you everything. Okay. On the seventh day. He said, don't work. Okay. Now, I know we're not strict Jewish people now. But let me tell you something. Okay. This is a principle. That the old time Christians used to believe in. They took a day a week. Okay. It wasn't Saturday like the Jews did. But it was a Sunday. They wouldn't do anything on it. Man. If you, you go back a hundred years. America shut down on Sunday. Okay. The stores weren't open. Okay. Nobody worked. I, I remember I grew up. <clears throat> you didn't. You didn't do nothing on Sunday. You, you went to church. You ate like pigs. Okay. You took a nap, you played in the yard, okay? I was the tail end of that generation because of how my mom and dad were raised. That, and I saw a little bit of that. Most, most people my age didn't see that, okay? But, but you didn't do it. My papa, he didn't fish on Sunday. He didn't hunt on Sunday, all right? He didn't. Now, we went to Colorado, and uh, dad and Jimmy and Derek and I, we went out there and season opened on a Sunday. And I said, dad... I love you, but I paid a lot of money to come out here, and I'm hunting on Sunday, okay? And uh, Dad said, I think I will too. So we went, we went hunting on Sunday. But, 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 you know, back then, why does God want you to do that? He wants you to pause, okay? 
and acknowledge where it comes from, where everything comes from, where all the blessings come from. That's the purpose of a Sabbath day. A lot of it bleeds over the same purpose for a tithe. When you yield back a tithe, you don't yield back a tithe because God needs it. Okay? You yield back a tithe because you need Him. And you're showing Him how much of your heart He has when you yield the tithe. God, I, you know what? You don't need this money, and I could use it. I could find a spot for it. I promise you I could, Lord. But you know what? I yield it to show you that you have me. That's, what he, that's the purpose of a tithe. Okay? Okay? Now, look at this. Fifth commandment. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land. So honor your father and mother, fifth commandment. Okay? Honor your father and mother. Sixth commandment. Okay? Sixth commandment. Watch it here. It goes quick. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. So, don't kill. Don't steal. Don't commit adultery. Okay? Now, watch this. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. That's lying. Verse 17. Thou shalt not covet. Okay? Don't lie. Don't covet. I'm abbreviating some of these definitions, right? No other gods before me. No graven image. No, don't take my name in vain. Honor the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Honor your father and mother. Mother. Okay? Don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery, don't lie, don't covet. Okay? So he gives these Ten Commandments that are the big ten, right? But here's what I want you to understand. You remember when they come to Jesus and they said in the New Testament, let me show you the bleed over between the Old Testament and the New Testament here. Okay? And they said, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? You remember that? Tell us the greatest commandment. What did he say? He said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind, right? All thy strength. And the second, he said, is likened to it. Love your neighbor. On these two hang all the law and the prophets, Jesus said. So he said, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. That's what he said. Now I want you to notice something here. Okay? First commandment, no other gods before me, no graven images, don't take my name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day. If you look at one through four, they deal primarily with how you treat God. And these are in order, the order they're on, they are in the order that they are in on purpose. Okay? First thing is you don't have any other gods before God. Man, if I could just get people to obey that one. You say, well, Brandon, we don't have any other gods. Oh, really? Money? (laughs) Hunting on Sunday? Hey, let let me tell you something. If... If Christians didn't have any other gods before God, the church houses would be full on Sunday and full every time the doors are open. Let me say that again. Let me say that to Catalyst Church. Let me say that to people watching on Facebook. Okay? We've got more important things to do than make God's house and the church a priority like it's clearly designed to be in the New Testament. Okay? I understand being gone every once in a while. All right? But when you're gone for three or four months at a time, and you pop in for a week, and then you're gone three or four months again, hey, you know what? You've got a God in your life that you are worshiping more than the God in heaven. Okay? When you don't put God first with your time, with the church, with your money, with everything, you have a God before Him. A lot of people, it's work work well i got i got to work 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 i understand working okay let me tell you something a lot of people have to work on sunday that's how their job they always come to me what do i do i got to work on sunday what you doing on wednesday night well i i can i come on wednesday night come on wednesday night okay all right well i gotta work on wednesday night what should i do come on sunday you come every time that you can okay you you put make that a priority make that a priority The first four commandments, no other gods before me, no graven images, don't take my name in vain. And the Sabbath day, it's how you treat God. Do you know if we had a generation of Christians that didn't have any other gods before God, just that first commandment, I think we could change the world.
Every once in a while, I'll get in a conversation with somebody, and I'll be like, you ever had a time in your life where you accepted the Lord? Nope, I haven't. Or, yep, I have, or whatever their answer is. And I'll be like, okay. And I'll try to ask some provocative questions and find out, hey, what are you trusting in to take you to heaven? And sometimes I've run into people before, and you just you can't get them saved because you can't get them lost. They ain't done nothing wrong. They're just perfect. Okay. I don't know how about it. I've, I've met a few perfect people in my life, apparently. Okay. And I'm like, man, have, 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 are, would you admit that you're a sinner? No, <laughs> no. I'm like, what? My, my mouth's hanging open. You're not a sinner. Nope. Nope. I obey all the commandments. Okay. So remember that you remember the rich young ruler that came to Jesus and he said, he said, Jesus, what do I do? What do I have to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, uh, simple, <laughs> obey all the commandments and don't mess up. Oh, I've done that since I was a boy, he said. I've done that all my life, Jesus said. Uh -huh. Now, see, people read that and they say, Jesus is telling him that if you want everlasting life, just obey the commandments. People will twist that and they'll say, that's what Jesus said, obey the commandments. It's not what Jesus is saying. He's saying, if you want to go to heaven, don't ever screw up, don't ever commit a sin, and you have nothing to go to hell for. Obey all the commandments all your life and this guy's like yeah i've done that and jesus is like oh okay go sell everything you have and give it to the poor and he's like oh i'm rich he couldn't even get past the first stinking commandment he had a god in his life that he wasn't willing to let god get in front of the true god his riches were his god and jesus made a fool of him he said okay cool. that's great you've obeyed all the commandments go sell everything you've got and give it to the poor you'll have everlasting life and he's like Ugh. he couldn't get past the first commandment most of the time neither can you right neither can i no other gods and especially when you get down here right <laughs> don't kill okay check haven't murdered anybody don't steal okay check haven't done that committed adultery okay check lie mm, okay maybe but that was that was a while back maybe that one doesn't count Okay, you can't think about any of these things. What? <laughs> right? You can't covet towards your neighbor's stuff or his wife or his car or his house. You may have never have committed adultery. You ever thought about it? And everybody just, right? Okay, if you're honest, you're sitting there and you're like, hey, I can't measure up to the first 10 commandments do you know there's over 600 commands in the old testament here's the first 10 i can't get past the first one a lot of times right because things just creep up into god's number one spot so often in our lives things take priority over god okay now let me say this first four deal with how we treat god now watch this Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten deal with how you treat other people. Honor your father and your mother. Don't kill anybody. Don't murder. That's 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 what that Hebrew word means. Because people get hung up on that and they'll be like, Well, I'm in the military and our country goes to war and I'm called on to do this. Am I breaking the Ten Commandments? Do not murder is what that what that means. Do not murder. Do not steal. That's treating people's property with respect. Adultery, treating people's marriages with respect. Don't lie to people. It's, it's, don't, don't treat people like that. Don't tell them a falsehood. Don't covet. Don't desire, even in your thoughts and your heart, what other people have. The first four is how you treat God. The second six is how you treat other people. It's what Jesus said. Love God and love your neighbor. On these two hang all the law, right? All right, so these Ten Commandments, <clears throat> he gives them. Now, I want to point out, there's a lot of commandments. Okay, anybody have any questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You're murdering yourself. It says do not kill, which is do not murder. It doesn't specify who. The Bible is very clear with 
when you're defending your family, defending your, your land, it's, it's different, a different qualification than murdering somebody because you didn't like them or you wanted, okay, Dave, here's a, here's a prime example, okay, David killed Goliath, he was heralded as a, as a hero, okay, he was threatening Israel, okay, it was war, all right, David killed Uriah, the husband of Bathsheba, and he was a murderer, and God called him out for it, okay, so there's, there, there is a, there is a difference. Well, to, I mean, the Bible says a few things about that, but I look at it. I mean, you're, you're taking the life of somebody. That is not your life. You are taking your life, so to speak, but it's life that God gave you. And you don't get to make that decision. Okay. God is, is in charge of that. Even my life. I don't have the right. My body is the temple of the, of the Holy Ghost. It is not mine to say when I die. That's my viewpoint on that. Yes, sir. Um, this about the and by the way, that is not in, in, in the Bible because I hear that all the time. Well, I, hey, somebody killed herself, are they automatically going to hell? I don't know what religion started that, but you show me Bible about it and I'll talk to you. You ain't got no Bible to back it up. Okay. Saul, there's good evidence that Saul, who is righteous, killed himself on the battlefield because he was wounded, took his sword and fell on it. Samuel told him, he said, <clears throat> today you'll be with me. And Samuel was already in heaven. Okay? So he, he was a righteous. Right. <laughs> you're so saved that you're saved from yourself. Now, let me tell you something. I have seen, I had a pastor. I'll just say this. Because I don't care. <clears throat> My preacher, when he was 29 years old, um, said he got in a very dark place in the ministry and contemplated suicide. Do I lift it up and say, oh, yeah, that, that. no, I don't believe in legalizing suicide. I don't believe in assisting it. I don't believe in any of those things. I believe in, but you can get in a dark place. Okay. You can get in a very dark place. Okay. I've counseled many church members over the years who have considered it. And uh, so, Andy. I knew Chuck Cassie pretty well and found him Chick -fil Chick -fil He lived close to us. And he always talked about, and people asked him all the time, why aren't you open on Sunday? And he believed that God has blessed Chick fil A so much because they have been on media. And I would, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. Real big people I've been on a couple trips, though, and pulled into a Chick fil A parking lot on a Sunday. And be like, oh my goodness, Truett, what are you doing? They're killing me here. I don't want McDonald's, right? Chick that was the day I went hunting. And, yeah. Now I want to show you a couple of commands here. Um, and, and I'm going to highlight these. All right. Uh, now, and I, there's a lot of commands in the Old Testament. I mean, if you start in chapter 21, okay. And, and Pam, to your question, there may be some things, and I don't know the, the scripture reference right off that addresses that specifically. Um, but if you read chapter 21 through chapter 31, okay, 21 through 31, it is a whole bunch of commands, okay? It is, it is commands like, okay, if you have a bull and the bull gets out of the pasture and gores somebody and hurts somebody. What happens to the bull and what happens to the person? And do you have to pay their medical bills? And do they have a, a, a right to come take money from you and all this kind of stuff? And if this happens and that happens. So there's, there is, I mean, if you want intricate details, there are. Now I want to, I pulled out a couple here that I want to show you because these are uh, the, okay. And, and, and let me say this. These are how God judged the nation of Israel. These are the laws that were put in for Moses and the leaders, the elders of Israel to put into place. Okay. This was God's way of running society. Okay. Some of these, the, I'm going to show you two, three verses here. Just pull them out. Some of these are uh, controversial by today's standards. Okay. I'm going to tell you something. Okay. Let me just look. 21, 12. He that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely 
put to death. That's what it says. If you kill somebody, you die. Murder, you die. My heart broke yesterday. I'd been following and praying for the young girl outside of Des Moines. And uh, my wife's from the Des Moines area, and, and this young Iowa 20-year-old college student followed on a jog and killed. God knows what else. That man ought to die and pay for her life with his life. And let me say this to you. There's something on the inside. Let me tell you something. There's something, and that doesn't make us, it doesn't make me a bad, bad person or a mean for, th for thinking that. That's what God thinks, okay? And I'm going to say something to you. You have, let me just put it like this. Charles Manson should never have sat in prison for 50 years and died in prison. And you and I and our tax dollars paying to take care of them. Okay? Now, this is an inconvenient truth in, in today's society. Okay? But every time I turn on the news, they're talking about overcrowded prisons. Well, <laughs> Let me, let, and, and I'm not trying to be, I'm saying there's a lot of crime, okay? The, I, I think there's even some crime that people shouldn't be in prison for. There, there needs to be a reform. But when it's clear that you murdered somebody, you should pay with your life, okay? And there's something on the inside of you and me when we turn on the TV and we see, oh, in Chicago or down in Atlanta, a little girl was, was taken and killed. There's something inside of us that screams for justice. And there was a time in this country, and, and you, you can like me, lump it, hate it, I don't care. There was a time in this country where when that happened, you were given a trial, you were found guilty, and you were either shot or you were hung. Now, <laughs> let me tell you something. God, ha God has a, he, he, of all things, God is holy, God is love, God is just, the Bible says. Just. Justice must be served. And he's very clear with murder, okay? He's very clear with those, those kind of things, okay? Let me, uh, let me just say this <clears throat> while, we're, while we're on the subject. Now, there are... Innocent people that get convicted. I understand all that. There needs to be a reform to the system, okay, where it, if, it, if it's clear you murdered somebody and you're found guilty, I don't, first of all, you should always, I believe our system is the best. You should always have due process, okay? You don't uh, get everybody and get torches and go raid the jail and, and string them up. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you get a, a trial. And if you're found guilty, you should pay with your life if you took somebody's life. Okay? Now, I, I believe you should get an appeal. Okay? Because, hey, maybe there wasn't good evidence or maybe your lawyer didn't do a good job. Do that. But you should only have so long. You shouldn't be able to stretch it out for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. Charles Manson, I mean, killed. I, I don't. It, he should have to pay with his life. He shouldn't die 82, 83 years old in prison. He shouldn't. It's wrong. He shouldn't. Okay, I am in favor of doing that uh, for death penalty. Okay, if any, in case you're wondering, I'm for the death penalty. Okay, in case you're wondering. Uh, so, uh, and and I'll say this: anybody that would harm a child should pay with their life. And that's not in the Bible. That's in the Brandon book. Okay, uh, you molest, hurt, rape, kill, torture a kid, you should pay. Okay, and, and, and let me say, and I've said this before publicly, and I'll just go ahead and say it again. If they put you in a firing squad, I'd volunteer to be the fire and would sleep well at night. Okay, uh, so there we go. All right, uh, I just thought I'd show you a couple of these. Uh, ver 24, verse 24. <laughs> eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. 25, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. 
That's where that comes from, okay? And can I tell you something? That we live in the greatest country in the world, and at one time, we ran this country according to what you're reading right here. Okay? Now, we're flawed. We ain't got everything right. Okay? But there was a time when we were closer to this book. Okay? We, we were like that. Okay, now. All right. Now that I probably made a couple of people mad, here we go. All right. Verse 24. Maybe not. Verse 24. I love you. Don't kill anybody. You don't have to worry about it, right? 24. Look at verse number one. I want to show you this real quick. What time, what time is it? 7.57. You know what? Dad, go on it. It's 6 o'clock. You're, you wouldn't lie to me, Marianne, would you? I'm not going to start it. It's 7.57. I can't. Okay. Any other, any questions, comments, um, uh, questions about what we've talked about? I wanted to get about twice again as far as we got. Uh, uh, Don, I think you said a couple weeks ago we should have church every night, right? Uh, maybe we should. Maybe we should. But uh, any questions? Yes, sir. Finish. Um, you always hear a lot of people uh, say this uh, when they want to get out of something. But are there any of these commandments that you know of that like were only for the Jewish people and weren't intended to last forever? You know what I'm saying? Because you always hear people say, oh, that was just for them. And never, right. uh, is there anything that clearly is not? Well, there in the New Testament, it says that Jesus, when he died on the cross, he did away, and it uses the word in the King James, it says he blotted out the handwriting of ordinances, okay? There are some ordinances or, or part of the law that, here's kind of how I view it, okay? Like, there were some things told to the Jewish people uh, that were just for them, like their dietary needs, Okay. They were a wandering nomadic people for 40 years, and he told them uh, certain things to stay away from, unclean, clean, you know, animals and things like that. That's why Jewish people to this day won't eat bacon and, and, you know, pig and all that kind of stuff. Okay? So, and I don't know if it's my stomach talking or not, but I'm okay with bacon. All right? Uh, but, uh, no, there, there's certain things that were, in, in my opinion, cultural and for that time and where they were at. Now, when you back up and you look at stealing, killing, ste uh, murdering, committing adultery, those are timeless, and those are not done away with. Jesus said it this way. He said, I am not come to do away with the law, but I'm come to, come to fulfill it. Okay, He's coming not to do away with it, but to fulfill uh, everything that it foreshadowed and pictured. And uh, so, I do not believe that all the commandments are done away with. Okay? Now, there's certain aspects like our salvation, uh, you know, they looked, they, they obeyed the commandments, realized they could not measure up. So they sacrificed, you know, the sacrificial system once a year that paid for their sin and they looked to the lamb and all this kind of stuff. Now that has changed, but, but not, not the commandments uh, per se, and especially not the big 10 that we always, we always think about uh, and, and those. Yes, ma'am. Just a quick question about how sometimes it contradicts each other. Like you were saying, say somebody killed my dog, or then I killed them. That says the murder, but then there it goes, says eye for an eye. He took the life out of the kid. You know how people say, you know, they'll bring that eye for an eye in there? Eye for an eye, two for two. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I, I think the best, the best way, if somebody killed somebody, obviously your first reaction is going to, I want to kill them back, right? Okay. Um, the best way is for a, uh, the ones that were given the, the rules, Moses and the elders to carry that out for them. So they don't have to worry about that person being executed duly. You know what I mean? Um, that if somebody's killed, they should pay with their life. Okay. Give them a fair trial and let, don't do it yourself. Well, it, I mean, literally it's talking in in context of, of murder and, and murdering things, if you, if you read those first few chapters of uh, 21, first few verses of 21. So it, it is, that is an eye for an eye. They are paying with their life for that life. So it is an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. <laughs> Come talk to me. No, don't, don't, don't. Let's, let's, I hope it don't. Absolutely hope it don't. Yes, ma'am, real quick. Oh, 
Lord. <laughs> Well, it's also reap what you sow. Yep. Yep. It could be, hey, it could be the justice of God coming back to, to get you. Real quick, George. I talked to a lawyer this past week, as a matter of fact, and he, uh, he got talking about the uh, sinister machine. And he told me he almost had a nervous breakdown before he retired because of the lies the lawyer had to tell. It would be. It would be. <laughs> I, now, the um, you know, it's uh, there's justice, and that's why I'm a big fan of the justice system in, in the United States because the way it's founded, you get a you get a, a a fair shake. It needs to be revamped because it's got major problems. Just like everything at its core in America is pr pretty good, but we're getting too much. Bureaucracy on top of it. Yes, ma'am. Yes, there is. Uh, I'd have to look at the context uh, of that, but uh, and if I'm not mistaken, that's in the context of, of Israel that that he will come back and pay uh, Israel's enemies back. Uh, that vengeance is is his, and yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. All right. Guys, we're going to get out of here. Thank y'all for, I'm sorry we didn't get farther tonight. Uh, y'all didn't listen quick enough. Uh, but uh, no, uh, I wish we, we could, we uh, wish we could have got, got a little farther. But uh, anyway, we'll see you next Wednesday night. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday. Uh, all right. Father, we love you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for um, speaking through us. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what you teach us. We love you. We need you. Help us to learn more and grow more. In Jesus' name, amen.